thank the organizers for the opportunity to present my work here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the hydrodynamic of vortices in Bose-Einstein and condensates. So this work uh, was done primarily thinking about the dynamics of vortices in Bose-Einstein and condensates, but as you you will see, uh, the results here are very general. It can be used in very different contexts. Uh, so uh, the motivation for this work was the fact that uh, in quantum turbulence, when I was working with uh, Professor Bagnato during my postdoc uh, uh, in the field of quantum turbulence, uh, many of the results are interpret uh, interpreted in the light of the classical Navier-Stokes equation, and then uh, uh, similarities are uh, 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 drawn uh, between the two fields. And uh, the problem is that uh, we actually don't have uh, equivalent to the Navier-Stokes equation in the case of, uh, uh, of quantum turbulence. Uh, and uh, I hope I can, I made a contribution in this case here. So the main point is that uh, whenever you we, ha we have uh, order parameter field uh, that is given by equa an equation like this, uh, first order in time and uh, is equal to uh, some functional of the uh, field psi, uh, for example, in the case of the gross task equation, then we can apply this theory that I'm going to present here. So uh, we can apply it for the gross task equation, but we can also apply for uh, Gisbo-Landau equation and uh, uh, any kind of equation that falls into this category here. Uh, so the main idea uh, in the uh, to derive uh, hydrodynamic equations is to do the so-called Madelung's representation, where we separate the amplitude of the uh, uh, condensate field from its phase, and then uh, we associate the velocity field, the superfluid velocity field, with the gradient of the phase, and that's. Uh, correct when we don't have vortices, that's not correct when we have vortices. And that's the problem that we uh, have to fix in order to get an equivalent to the Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, and the point is that, uh, uh, for example, in the 2D vortex case, we have the uh, uh, very well-known form for this uh, vortex solution with the quantized circulation that uh, everyone here probably knows. Uh, but the problem is that uh, in this kind of situation, uh, the uh, phase field is not uh, really uh, uniquely defined. We know that it's a multi-valued field, and it has we can always sum a multiple of 2 pi to it, and this fact uh, is what... Uh uh, demands us to be more careful when we do those uh, manipulations. Uh, so, for example, in the case of the gross task equation, we have this continuity equation and the, uh, the dynamic equation for the velocity field. And as we may see here, if we take uh, the rotation of V, we see that the uh, the vorticity has no dynamics because this is a gradient. If we take the curl of the gradient, it gives zero. It would give no vorticity dynamics, which is, of course, wrong. Uh, so, as I, s as I said, uh, quantum turbulence relies on the similarity between this equation and Navier-Stokes equation. But this equation doesn't describe vorticity. So, it's a, a problem there. Uh, so, what is the problem? The problem is that uh, S is a multivalued field. So when we uh, try to calculate the, uh, the velocity field, we usually use the chain rule of differentiation. And the fact is that the chain rule cannot be used when we have multivalued fields. Uh, in fact, what happens is that when we uh, choose a given representation for the, our phase S, for example, we can 
uh, consider uh, one charted vortex in uh, two dimensions and we limit our phase uh, so that it's between zero and two pi, uh, we see that the phase field has a discontinuity here. It m which means that when we take the gradient of the phase field, we have a delta function uh, term, a delta function contribution coming from this discontinuity. Uh, uh, this generates an error uh, when we try to calculate the velocity as being given by this uh, gradient. In order to compensate for that, we have to sum, we have to uh, subtract uh, to sum to the, to the gradient of S the field A so that uh, our velocity field becomes the gradient of S plus A. Okay. So this is the so-called uh, 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 defect gauge field. And then we see that we get, uh, as we should, that the rotation of B, the curve of B, is a delta-like function. Uh, okay, so this is all well explained in Huggins Kleiner's book, uh, multivalued fields in condensed matter, electromagnetism, and gravitation. And the main point is that when we have a multivalued field and we want to take the derivative of this exponential, we cannot use chain rule. We must include the defect gauge field A in order to compensate for the discontinuities in the phase. Uh, so that was the 2D case. We can generalize all this discussion to n dimension, uh, to an arbitrary dim space-time dim dimension. Uh, and in this general case, uh, our phase can always be transformed with, uh, with this kind of transformation, a 2 pi uh, uh, sum to it, uh, multiple of 2 pi. And when we do this, our defect gauge field must also be transformed according to this rule. Uh, okay. For the arbitrary dimensional case, uh, we use Einstein notation, and uh, uh, the derivative rule is uh, the correction to the chain rule, uh, uh, follows this equation, which means that our velocity field is not the gradient of the phase, it's the gradient of the phase plus the defect gauge field. Uh, and the defect gauge field follows the, those gauge transformations, which allows us to uh, to define the force uh, tensor in an analogy with the electromagnetic theory. Uh, it turns out that by using those definitions, we, we get automatically uh, the topological conservation laws, which means the conservation laws for, ver for vorticity and uh, uh, for vorticity in 2D and 3D. We obtain that uh, this vector here the zero component, the time component of it gives the vorticity, while the spatial components gives the vort current. Uh, in 3D, we have a vorticity vector and a vortex current tensor. Uh, and uh, this electric field, the analogous of the electric field, is the important thing that corrects the hydrodynamic equations in order to uh, being to derive one, being able to describe vorticity. Uh, so the main point is that if we take a spatial derivative of the zeroth component of velocity field, uh, we get this equation, uh, w which we can manipulate, and this uh, arranging, uh, rearranging the, ter the terms, we get the hydrodynamic equation. So. This is similar to the previous uh, uh, hydrodynamic equation that I showed uh, that I showed before. Uh, we had we had there the uh, time derivative of the velocity field and the gradient of something. The new thing that we get here is this electric field, um, and this is this electric field which corrects the hydrodynamic equation. Uh, in the case of gross task equation, we have that this V0 <coughs> is given by this expression, and our hydrodynamic equation is the gradient of this plus the electric field. 
and the electric field accounts for the vorticity effects. Uh, we have to obtain uh, 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 an explicit form for this electric field uh, in terms of density and uh, velocity. Uh, the, the gauge field is associated to a given representation of my phase, as I, as I said, the phase is not unique. I must choose one uh, representation for the phase in order to calculate the, uh, the gauge field. Uh, in the special case where I restrict my phase to be between 0 and 2 pi, I get uh, the gauge field given by this formula here. Okay. Um, this gives me this force field tensor. So here we see that the force field tensor has a delta function uh, uh, from the real part of my psi field times a delta function from the uh, imaginary part of psi field. So this force field tensor is only important when psi e equals to zero. Uh, which means that it's only important when we have vortices. Uh, this is due to this factor here. Uh, so manipulating this expression, we get that the force field is given by this, and the electric field is given by this formula, where V0 is model-specific. So if we have the Landau theory, we have a different V0, and so on. Uh, so we, now we can check whether this theory really gives the correct dynamics for vortices and vortex lines in three uh, spatial dimensions. Uh, uh, and uh, in order to do this, uh, what we have to do is to check that uh, a vortex, a point vortex in two dimensions is simply uh, a point where the imaginary, where the line of uh, zero real part for psi crosses the line uh, where the psi imaginary part of psi is equal to zero. Where they cross, we have a singly charged vortex. If we analyze the phase ar going around this point, we see that it goes from zero to two pi. In this situation, for example, or in that situation here. Uh, So in the vicinity of this crossing point, we can simplify our delta functions, and uh, we get uh, specific formulas for our vorticities and vortex current. And here we see that our vortex current is simply uh, the vorticity times the vortex velocity. And the vortex velocity is consistent with the dynamics of this crossing point. The crossing point is described by those two equations here. Uh, so this equation here uh, describes the motion of the uh, line where the real part of psi is equal to zero. This here describes the uh, line where the imaginary part of psi is equal to zero. If we combine the two, we find the dynamics of this crossing point, and we see that this dynamics here agrees with this formula for the vortex velocity in general. Uh, if we want to describe uh, 3D vortex lines, we can simply take a plane crossing the line, and then we can use this, um, this uh, 2D result to uh, generalize the results, uh, to generalize to the 3D case. Uh, also, um, we can check what happens in this special case, uh, uh, the so-called quasi-isotropic case, where our psi function is some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, analytic uh, complex function times this uh, prefactor here. Uh, and we find out that the motion of this kind of vortex is given by the, uh, the background velocity field, which comes from this contribution here plus a contribution due to the uh, variations in the background density. And this, uh, uh, this gives an analytic uh, uh, expression to the, these results here obtained by Natalia Berlov uh, 
numerically. Uh, okay. Um, another thing that can be analyzed using this uh, theory is the uh, creation and annihilation of vort the vortex pairs and the recombination, uh, 2D vortex pairs and recombinations of uh, 3D vortex lines. And uh, uh, to describe this process, we can imagine here the, the, the creation of a vortex pair is simply the situation where we look at those uh, pictures from the right to left. This is the line where the real part of psi is equal to zero. This is imaginary part of psi is equal to zero. When those lines cross, there is a crossing point. When they cross, we get those two vortices here with opposite vorticities. If we go from right to left, we have a vortex pair creation. If we go from left to right, we have vortex pair annihilation. And when we analyze the situation, we see that uh, we obtain uh, this universal result that tells that the vortex reconnection process goes always, always with this power law. So the distance between the two vortices or the two vortex lines always falls with the square root of the time. It doesn't matter whether this is uh, condensate, superfluid, or I don't know what more. This is always correct. This was experimentally observed in the case of uh, liquid helium, and uh, it turns out that this is a universal law. Uh, this can be obtained by calculating the vortex velocities, and we see that they fall, uh, uh, they, they, they go always with the, when the, two, when the vortex pair are is the two vortices are close to one another, the velocity always goes to the inverse of the distance. Uh, and then you see that in this kind of situation, we can have uh, vortex fluxes without vorticity, which means that in the exact moment when the vortex pair is created, we have a vortex, a vorticity flux without any vorticity. This vorticity flux is the responsible for the creation of the pair or the annihilation of the pair. Uh, so, uh, uh, to conclude, uh, this the fact field, uh, uh, the fact gauge field theory provides the general framework to understand, for example, uh, the, turbul the turbulence problem. Uh, we correctly describe the vortex motion, the vortex uh, 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 annihilation and creation process, and uh, vortex lines uh, 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 process. And more details, please look at this uh, reference here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for staying within the allocated time.